Hey everyone, welcome. My name is David Vignola and on behalf of Home Recording Made Easy and PreSonus, I would like to welcome you to Recording Drums in Studio One Made Easy. In this series, I'm gonna show you how to record professional sounding drums in the home studio environment using affordably priced equipment. No $3,000 microphones, high-end custom drums, or outboard gear will be used. We are just gonna use gear that is obtainable by the average musician and audio engineer. Before we get started, I wanna personally thank PreSonus and Triad Orbit for providing some of the equipment we're gonna use in this series. Be sure to visit their website for more information about all the great products they have to offer. Now let's get started and get ready for recording drums in Studio One Made Easy. Once these are finger tight, I like to now, and again, this is just personal preference. Some drummers will do this, some people will tell you you don't need to do this. Um, again, there's no right or wrong, there's just guidelines. What I like to do is I like to what we call seat the head. So I like to put a little bit of pressure, not too much. You don't want to slam your hand through it, but I want to put a little bit of force on it just to kind of stretch the head out, especially if it's a new drum. You want to make sure that that head is seated on the bearing edge really nice. And once you do that, you may find that the lugs may come up a hair loose. So again, you want to just finger tight them or finger tighten them. Seventy-five. Okay. So again, you can get really anal about this. Seventy-five, and you can make them so they're exactly the same value, which is ideal. But for the purpose of this video, to try to keep this somewhat uh, reasonably short, is we're gonna we're just gonna get close here. So an eighth of a turn. Set it back down again. Seventy-five. Okay. So now all our drums are at seventy-five, which is where we want to be. Um, but I want to show you um, a couple of things that I've learned over the years that kind of help with the final product of recording the raw tracks. Primarily to reduce the bleed uh, between the microphones and also to um, get the maximum and most consistent playing out of the musician themselves or out of the drummer themselves. So what you want to try to do is you want to try to have the drummer sit kind of as high as possible we're being comfortable. A lot of times I'll see drummers that'll sit way down here like this, they sit really, really low and they got their foot on the kick pedal and their knees up almost in their chest and you don't get the power behind the kick hits as you would if you were sitting higher. So what I try to have my drummers do and what I like to do when I like to play is I like to set my drum, my drum thrown up, my seat, as high as I possibly can while being comfortable. So I'm sitting and getting much more of my body weight and my leverage behind that kick. So as I hit those kick hits on the kick pedal, we're getting much more consistency. When you sit down too low, you tend to get a lot of flubby notes and you tend to get a lot of uh, uh, inconsistency in the kick hits. If the drum is more flat, you're gonna get much more of a consistent strike from the stick hitting the drum head. And it's gonna get a lot more power on the snare. When the drum is tilted back at an angle, what tends to happen is it tends to, you tend to hit it this way if you can look from the side view here, and what ends up happening is you're not getting as much uh, stick on the head, not as much contact, and it tends to, again, every drummer is different, but it tends to not be as solid. It tends to be a little bit more skewed of a hit. So try to get that snare with as little angle as possible. The other thing you wanna do is open this up and you just wanna make sure that you're actually, this, this piece of software is actually talking to the Studio 192 and it's actually working. So I like to come up to the top left-hand corner under the mic input, make sure you've selected the first microphone channel and just take this preamp slider and just move it up and take a look at your Studio 192, the front panel, you should see the, um, the gain increase. You can uh, hit the 48 volt switch and you'll see the 48 volt LED light up. You can un, un uh, highlight that. You can turn down your preamp. Once you uh, have verified that the UC surface is actually talking to the Studio 192, you can move on. If for some reason that's not working and you can't get the UC surface controlling the Studio 192, go ahead and power down your Studio 192 by pressing the, LED, the blue LED button, shut it off, return it on relaunch universal control or UC surface and it will go ahead and it should recognize it at that point. Is how you place this microphone. Moving it from here and just moving it two or three inches to one side or the other will make a huge difference in the way that drum recording sounds when you listen back in Studio One. Okay, so what, you, what I recommend you do is you start off in maybe this kind of a position if you have a, a basic five piece kit and you want to experiment with your particular microphone. Now this happens to be a microphone that has three pickup patterns that we can select from. Figure eight, 
cardioid, and omni. This is being set in cardio, mo cardio mode right now, which means it's only really taking a capture of what's at the front of the capsule. There is a lot of rejection from the back and from the top and from the two sides, okay? But by selecting different pickup patterns, the drums will sound completely different. So if you have a multiple uh, pickup selection, on your large diaphragm condenser mic, I urge you to go ahead and try the different, uh, try the different pickup patterns, try different mic placements, and see what you can come up with. But for this example, we're using it in cardioid, where we're about shoulder height, right over my right shoulder, taking a picture of the kit with the microphone um, slightly angled on about a 45 degree angle right towards the center of the snare drum. The other thing that you can do, which is really cool, is you can see we have the EQ section lit up here. So again, I'm trying to get my, trying to get my finger not in the way here. If I just take this and just um, move this, if I change my EQ curve, you can see on my computer screen, you can see that the EQ follows it. So this works really, really well. And you know what, there's no lag time. It is like very responsive. Sometimes what'll happen with this kind of technology, sometimes you'll you'll touch something on the iPad, and whatever you touch on the iPad takes a couple of seconds of, of lag before it actually controls it on your computer. Not with this. This works really, really well. Um, we're going to take a look at this uh, last um, 10 mic technique, and we're just going to do a little quick little mix with some EQ and compression using just stock plugins, just to show you how you can take some of the raw tracks, where, which were recorded really well um, throughout this series, and make them sound even better and put a little bit of polish on them. So this, what you see in front of you, is the 10 mic um, configuration that we did, where we have a kick, sub kick, snare, top and bottom, toms one, two, and three, overheads left and right in the room, mono mic. 